Well, today I'm thinking of making a ginger ale. I did the uh, experimental coffee soda. And I've been drinking it, but it's not the greatest. Uh, it's all right. So, uh, simple ginger ale. I like a strong one. So I think about three inches of ginger to be juiced. We'll start with that. That can just be the first thing to do. Put that in there. Let me get the jammer. Kind of like the Galloping Gourmet usually has everything done already. It's got most everything done. So let's see if that's... I have the directions written on this coffee thing for the ginger ale. I'm not going to use this bottle because... I'm not going to use this bottle because it's probably going to taste like coffee inside of it. So it says to six teaspoons of ginger juice, which is twice as much as what... Which is two tablespoons, which I think usually it's like a tablespoon is the good stuff. Uh, I might need more than that. Let me see what tablespoon that is. All right. I'm going to pour this over just in case it spills. It's one tablespoon. That's about two tablespoons. That's good. All right. Mm. Ooh. Hot, hot, hot. Okay, so we put uh, two tablespoons of sugar, which is a lot less than first, less than what what you want if you want a sweet drink. You got to put more in there. I do the the minimal. I think the minimal is a tablespoon per liter. I do two tablespoons, just give it a little sweetness, just to make the ferment work. Um, and then you'd put an eighth of a teaspoon of yeast in there, but I'm going to try a non-yeast recipe today with this uh, brew. It's basically the uh, same stuff I use for the coffee soda, which worked great. But this has been sitting in the refrigerator for three weeks now, too, so I don't know if it's still good or not. Which I think it is. It's just ginger. So you chop up a tablespoon of ginger, and then you put it in water and... A teaspoon of sugar I think it was I forgot so that still smells good so we'll pour some of that in here to ferment the ginger ale with we'll let let the ginger fall in there too let's, let's try that much find out in a couple days how well that works um, just go ahead and pour the ginger juice in here. Oh, that's what I got to do is the lime. Or lemon. You need a, a half of a lemon, but I didn't have any lemons today. So what I have is this frozen, I juiced these lemons, and this is an ounce, I think an ounce of lemon, juiced lemon with the peel and all. So I'm going to stick that in, in the tea. Let that thaw. So I don't want it to be too cold. So this is Yin Hao Jasmine Tea. It's like the third, third brew, so it's my light, but it, it adds, it seems to make the flavor of the ginger ale kind of sweeter. Much more sweet. Uh, then this bottle that I'm using has been rinsed out with uh, vinegar just to keep it from uh, doing whatever. Ah, I need this dry for the cayenne pepper. Um, so I ran into a food scientist uh, on the cruise. I lived in Montreal and uh, I was always think, saying, thinking, oh, there's like all these fermenting things, you can get sick. But basically, he says that uh, the only time the bad bacteria comes around is whenever you're using meat, meat, dairy stuff. So I don't integrate any meat or dairy in anything. So it should be uh, safe. But we'll see. It's uh, So far, so good. It's been very well. Okay, got that. And this is still kind of, it's just warm. Not too hot. Yeah, it's probably pretty perfect for 
brewing ginger ale because you don't want it to be too cold. I'm going to add a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. I like the kick. And it's good therapeutically, cayenne pepper. I did a lemon, le the lemon maple cayenne juice fast for a week once. It was actually surprisingly great. There's that. Then we'll add the two tablespoons of ginger. That's the magic ingredient. Add a little water with that just so I can rinse out the good, the good ginger juice. Don't want, to, don't want to waste any of the ginger. Rinse that through. And then to make it complete, we'll add the. Uh, um, jasmine green tea. It's a yin hao green tea. I like it. You can use anything, water, green tea. Almost works out perfect. Now I'll shake it up. I'll shake it gently just to get the sugar all integrated in there. See if I'm missing anything. So we got two tablespoons of sugar, eight teaspoon yeast, but I'm using the uh, this ginger ferment, the homemade stuff, to see if it has less of a yeasty flavor. Half of a lime or lemon juice, quarter teaspoon cayenne pepper. I've done some agave syrup. I'm going to try it just with sugar because it just. I guess I hear that the the most least processed, just the simplest sugar is the best because the uh, ferment eats it easier. So, and it converts it so it's not like really sugar after it's done. Uh, let's see. So now I'll just top it off with some filtered water. Uh, So if you want less kick, I would assume just use one, one tablespoon of uh, ginger juice, which is probably an inch, inch of ginger juiced. And that's, I think, the important thing is the juiced ginger, fresh juiced. It's very delicious. I leave some room. This doesn't seem, ginger ale doesn't foam up as much as that coffee soda did. So... And now we just let this uh, sit out in room temperature. Now it's winter, it might take longer to ferment, but it's 24 to 48 hours until this bottle gets really stiff so you can see it really uh, loose. So once it's real stiff, hard, hard, then we throw it in the refrigerator to stop it from fermenting. And it's ready to drink. It's delicious and it lasts. I've already had that other ginger ale for three weeks in the refrigerator, and it's just like a nice champagne, champagne bubble. All right, enjoy the ginger ale. Bye.